Hi everyone. Today we're looking at an entire family of Ogolai 35 miniature cameras. For the rest of this video, I'll be referring to them as Rolai 35, with apologies to our German friends. These are viewfinder cameras. Some believe that these are the most compact, fully manual, fully mechanical cameras. There are some smaller cameras, such as Minolta TC1, but those are not fully mechanical, fully manual. Rolai 35 was produced between 1966 and 2015 in both Germany and Singapore. The quality of all of them is exceptional, regardless of where they are made. Rolai 35 was designed by Heinz Vasker. At the time he was working for Bergen camera, so he took it to his boss, Heinrich Bergen, who wasn't impressed and thought it was a waste of time developing it. He then admitted that he was going to get out of the camera business altogether. So, some time later, Vasker took the prototype to Ludwig Leitz and Kodak. Both of them let him down. Ludwig is of course the son of Ernst Leitz, co-owner of the um, Leitz camera, which is Leica. He was also the designer of the uh, Leica M3 rangefinder. Later on, Vasker joined Rolai and they were very interested in his prototype and immediately started the production in 1966. They upgraded some of the features and went for the very best of the best. For example, they changed the light meter from selenium, which was common at the time, did not require any batteries, old technology, they replaced that with a brand new Gaussian CDS light meter, which used batteries, it was smaller, more accurate, and they still work today whereas the selenium hardly works today. Also, lenses were subcontracted to Zeiss and they did a fantastic job of creating a variety of lenses for Rolai 35. A subsidiary of Zeiss, Compor, made the shutters. So this was an all-star camera. Later on, the production shifted to Singapore and a few changes were made. For example, the lenses were now made by Rolai itself. The shutter was changed to Copal and exposure meter made by Nissan, both of those made in Japan. Let's look at all the features systematically. We'll start from the top. The top is a little unusual in the way that the film advance lever or winding lever is on the left. Usually they're on the right, but it doesn't make much difference. The shutter release is here and it can take a cable release as well. This is the light meter it has an orange circle which you can match with the light meter needle. I'll show that later. This button is used for collapsing the lens. So let's first pull this collapsible lens out. Hold the two ends, pull out, twist to the right, clockwise. In order to collapse it again, you have to press this button, but not before you wind the lever. Lever must be wound. In order to make this lens collapsible, the shutter is in two parts. Half of it is inside the lens barrel, the other half is in the body. The two of them need to decouple before the lens can be collapsed. And that mechanism is activated by winding this lever. When you do that, then you press this button, twist, fold back, and it collapses. The lens, as you can see in this Roll I-35, is the Carl Zeiss Tessar F1.35, 40mm slightly wide angle a very high quality lens the viewfinder is here nice large and bright it is not a range finder so you have to guess the distance the distance is in the first ring over here the top section is in meters from 0 0.9 meters to infinity the depth of field is in the second ring over here for example between 8 and 8 if your Aperture is on 8 here. Between 8 and 8, everything is in focus. On this occasion, approximately from 2 to 6 meters. If you want to see this in feet, no problem. Turn the camera upside down and you see it in feet. In the front, you have two dials here. It may or may not be coincidental that Rolai Flex TLR cameras also had these on either side of the twin lens. That was quite common at the time. That may have been the inspiration for this. One of them on this side is 
for the aperture as you can see you can select it by rotating this knob however you first have to press this button and twist it with the other finger it goes from 22 to 3.5 and it clicks in place on the other side you can see the shutter speed dial it goes from B to half a second to one fourth one eighth all the way to one five hundredth of a second both dials have additional center dials this one is only for reminding you of the type of film you have negative color etc on the other side the center dial is for selecting the film speed ASA or ISO on one side DIN on the other side it goes from 25 ISO to 1600 ISO which is very respectable on this side you have a very small hole for the Gaussian light meter which is CDS battery operated quite advanced at the time quite new technology most cameras with light meters at the time used selenium that didn't use battery but they're large and they died after a while so in the 2020s it's very hard to find any that work this works today on the back there isn't very much there is only a film rewind lever just pull it up and rewind the film inside the viewfinder you can see the frame line very nice and sharp and clear at the bottom you have a hot shoe which is unusual because usually the hot shoe is on the top but the compaction of this camera indicated that a hot shoe on top would not fit and even then by having the flash on top you would lose contact with all of these dials it would be in the way however one idea was that the camera would be made reversible you can turn the camera this way and have the flash on top and continue to use it as long as you're happy to press the shutter release on this side with your left hand at the bottom you also have the film counter over here the tripod socket over here and the film winding lever over here which is collapsible goes into there and comes out rotates clockwise in order to open the film back you have to slide it out first you unlock it by twisting this outward then by pulling the entire bottom and the back out there's nothing in this everything is in this including the pressure plate which is a fold out one more unusual feature is that the film canister goes on the right the film goes over to the left the take up spool is on the left the opposite of most cameras of the time which were the other way around the film chamber is the most compact it hardly has any wasted area the right hand side as you can see is just a, a plate on the left hand side you have this barrel with a five notch sprocket system which was patented right on the edge and goes around the corner to use minimum amount of space if you compare it with other cameras they waste another centimeter and a half or so for a separate barrel outside of this but this is very compact this is a giveaway it means that the battery goes here the battery is the px13 or px625 which is the old mercury type battery no longer made that's a different story which I'll explain to you later in order to replace the battery you have to twist this plate over here this pops out put the battery in here with the positive facing outward and this put this back since you can't find those batteries today refer to the end of this video and I'll show you what kind of batteries you can use for it today to put the back plate on again the two grooves here and here you don't press it in until they're perfectly aligned then you slide it in and you make sure this goes under that other plate then you lock this is actually a very simple and easy camera to use 
The technique for using it is to look down almost like in a TLR camera with a properly working battery inside it you will see a white needle which indicates the level of the light for example this the orange circle needs to match the white needle that means the correct exposure you can adjust that in two ways you can either twist the shutter dial or the aperture dial both of them move the orange circle so the combination of the two will give you the right exposure let's say 125 and 3.5 in this light is fine you can change one and adjust the other one as well again no problem 30 and 8 easily done right and it's very accurate if you get the right battery in there at 1.35 volts otherwise you make a mental adjustment by two stops if you use a 1.5 volt battery you guess the distance and adjust the meter or take advantage of the depth of field and go for a range that will suit you for the next say 10 minutes so everything is now set then you look through here and shoot probably for the next 10 minutes unless the light condition changes or you'll change location that setting is fine you can wind and shoot so this is an early model of uh, the idea of point and shoot but it doesn't imply automation be careful with the exposure meter it has no cover and the camera has no off button whatsoever so if the camera is left out in the light the light meter is generating some current through the battery and through the camera so the battery is being depleted the original theory was that all of these came with a leather case and inside the case is pitch dark and it will not use any battery whatsoever it will last for a long time alternatively put it in a dark cupboard or a drawer this is the German version as it says over here and I also described to you some of the features of the Singapore version that are different this one is unusual it is Rolai Singapore as you can see and yet all of its features are identical to the German version it doesn't have the roll eye made lens it has a Carl Zeiss lens I'm suspecting that this is a hybrid where all the parts came from Germany and they assembled it in Singapore maybe as practice so the only difference is the made in Singapore stamp over here all other features are identical this roll eye 35 was in a way regarded as a professional model compact camera so like many manufacturers, Rolai decided to bring out some entry-level cameras cheaper. For example, this one. C35. Almost the same size, but with a few features missing. The lens is still Carl Zeiss, but it's now Triotar, not Tessar. Film counter is now at the top not at the bottom which is a good thing it doesn't have any light meter at all so you have to guess the light or use a manual light meter the lens is still retractable all the adjustments are on the lens itself now not in the front so this is the distance in meters This is the aperture from 3.5 to 22 and this is the shutter speed from B straight to 30th and then to 1 500th of a second.
Lens collapses by pressing this button. The button is not on top anymore. It's a little bit closer to bayonet mount type location. Press this, rotate and go back. So it's a simplification of all mechanisms. Very basic camera. The opening of the back door is by rotating this now. This comes out. There's no need for a battery, so there's nothing there. The rest of the mechanism is very similar. Compact light box and the same highly compact corner mechanism for film transport. So here it is, Rollei C35, the entry level version. But there was another one, which is the same as this one, entry level. The design is very similar as you can see, but B35 has a selenium light meter. It's a step backwards from the Gaussian electronic light meter using a battery. This is selenium, it does not use a battery, but also it doesn't last forever. So it's very hard to find one that works today in the 2020s. B35 was later on renamed as 35B, which is exactly the same, but it's more in line with the naming system adopted by Rolai. The lens still comes out the same way, twist and lock, distance, aperture and shutter and lens collapse button, rotate to the left, push in. This one has a light meter, that's the major difference between B and C. So it's the same as C and they've squeezed in a light meter on top this time. The operation of the light meter is very, very similar to the handheld light meters of the time. This is a twin ring arrangement. The middle one adjusts the DIN or ISO or ASA. You match the needle with one of these, which happen to be the aperture. And on the other side, the arrow gives you the exposure. Very simple. So on this occasion, 8 and somewhere between 30 and 60. But does it transfer those to the lens? Of course not. You have to do that manually yourself. So you read it over here. It says 8 matched up to either 30 or 60 and you select it yourself. That's what you have to do. And later, Rollei 35S in black. The difference between these two is the lens. Have a look now. It says made by Rollei and it's a Sona 28-40mm. So it's one f-stop faster than the other one. And it is made in Singapore. I wonder if the S stands for Singapore. In every other way, it is the same. The location of all the dials and knobs and buttons is exactly the same. Let's open the back to make sure. Yes, battery chamber there, battery type is there, film chamber there, it's identical. And some people are very fussy about these lenses which one do you go for? A faster lens, but not made in Germany by Zeiss? I can simplify it for you. They're both good. It doesn't matter which one you go for. They're both excellent. For practical use, makes no difference. After all the different models of Rollei 35 came out, they had letters like B or C and so on. Rollei decided to re-release this and add a T to it. 
So that's Rollei 35T, which is exactly the same as the original Rollei 35. On this occasion, a beautiful black, but the same features in every way. What's this then? This is the original unopened package of Rollei 35T. That's the original packaging, never opened. This must be worth a fortune. Even later models of Rollei 35 had a suffix of SE. That means, given the same features, now inside the viewfinder, you see an indication of the light metering. All the rest of them have a simple viewfinder with no information inside. But with these, now you have the light meter indicated inside and as you adjust you can see that it's correct so you can feel your way with these two buttons and inside you see that it's correct and you can take the shot but even that is not entirely sufficient because the distance has to be measured manually so if you can guess that and you can set the same distance say to infinity for landscape photography. You can then keep this at your eye level and repeatedly shoot. This also is an unopened Rollei 35 SE. quickly compare this compact camera with a few celebrated compact cameras that might be even better known. For example, this beautiful Olympus XA by the famous designer Mr. Maitani. It's not fully manual, fully mechanical, or fully metal. It's a plastic camera. The uh, Aperture selection is on the left, ISO is at the bottom, and the shutter speed is automatic. But this is also highly priced, very expensive these days, very beautiful. Look at the size, very similar. I think the difference is only about five millimeters in length. The thickness is the same or even slightly less if you ignore the bump. So that's one comparison. Another celebrated compact camera is this Minox 35PL. Shorter, thinner, but three millimeters longer. And it's not fully mechanical or manual. It opens like this, retractable lens again. The aperture can be selected at the top over here. Focus ring is manual, but shutter speed is automatic. Another celebrated compact camera, which predates Rollei 35, was well known at the time, was the Olympus Pen. Also by Mr. Maitani the designer of this one. Very well known at the time and appreciated by Mr. Vasquez, the designer of Rollei 35. However, Olympus Pen, which is also extremely compact, is a half frame camera. Look at the comparison. It is a half frame camera. The compaction has been achieved by going for the half frame. Mr. Vasquez decided to have all of the challenges at the same time, the most compact camera and full frame 35 millimeters. So he had to get rid of a few things. For example, this eight part, eight sprocket ring over here, this eight sprocket barrel over here. I showed it to you on that one. He incorporated it in the very edge and he compacted the entire body sideways.
So the mechanism for opening the back is the same. So you can see some of the inspirations. Mechanism for opening the back similar to Olympus pen by twisting this, very similar. The idea of a full metal body extremely compact, the same. The idea of these two TLRs of the time, the idea of rec retractable lens from Barnack Leica cameras. Doesn't mean that these, these were stolen. These are just influences of the design of the time. They're just doing the rounds. The only thing that's missing is a rangefinder. A rangefinder was attempted as an add-on to the top, but that was not successful. It was too clumsy, so it was left out. In actual practice, there's no problem using this. Now let's take a family photo. Original Rolleye 35, made in Germany. Rolleye 35, made in Singapore. Entry level Rolleye C35. Entry level Rolleye B35. Singapore made Rolleye 35S. Then re-release of the original Rolleye 35 as 35T in black. And then the more advanced one with light metering inside the viewfinder as 35SE. And here is our family photo. If you find this video useful, please subscribe. And that's the smallest thing you can do for me in return for putting the effort into these videos. Thank you very much. One final observation. If you get one of these cameras, you're going to fall in love with them. As a real functional camera and almost as a piece of jewelry, a functional piece of jewelry, a Rolex watch, I highly recommend you get one while they are still there. There are some in absolutely perfect condition. They take terrific pictures on probably one of the best lenses anywhere. You will not regret it. Here's a quick tutorial on what to do about the battery problem. PX13, PX625, which is also equal to MR9. Mercury batteries cannot be found today. You need a replacement. I'll give you the replacement options. Online, you can find an alternative such as this. As long as the number says 625, the prefix or suffix doesn't matter. They will be the right shape. They will fit into that chamber over there. However, most of them are not the right voltage. The original PX13, PX625 or MR9 were 1.35 volts. These new ones, which are alkaline, are 1.5 volts. So they will probably cause your camera to overexpose by two stops. So you might like to make a compensation for that if you know that you've used this kind of 1.5 battery. This is another brand, same thing. 625 is used in the name, PX65A as in alkaline, also 1.5 volts. Option two, you can order a wind cell. Quite expensive, but they come pre-engineered to be exactly 1.35 volts. I haven't had a good experience with these, but maybe others have. They're quite expensive too, but they're exactly the right size and the right voltage. Option three is to use one of these adapters. These are very cheap brass adapters, about $2 each or roundabout. Get them from eBay or AliExpress. And then you put inside them an LR44 or SR44 battery, which is very commonly available. Put them inside positive to the downside and this is exactly the right shape you put it inside the chamber it works LR44 or SR44 are also 125 volts so you have to make adjustments mentally for the voltage difference yet another option is a different kind of adapter a more expensive adapter I'll show you this is an adapter you can get online from vendors in Japan it looks like they're made of uh, machined aluminium and inside they have some electronics 
possibly resistors and diodes and so on to change the voltage from 1.5 to 1.35 so that is a permanent solution you get a common LR44 pop it in and it's exactly like the original PX13 the right voltage but this kind of adapter is a little electronic device so they're a lot more expensive than those brass adapters I showed you before if you love your roll i35 get yourself one of those while that nice vendor in Japan is still available in fact go and buy five of those you'll use them in many different cameras that's the one I use in this camera one more tip to open this chamber it's very hard to get a coin in there in the confines of that use a teaspoon and uh, make sure that when you screw it back on you don't cross thread it's very easy to cross thread again using a teaspoon is the way to do it and it will stop you from cross threading it's very easy if you want even more information about battery alternatives for old cameras including this one look at this video which we have produced including many many different battery problems in old cameras. Mm -hmm.